six at Ascot, a class one handicap over the 1600 metres. And again, another intriguing affair when you see horses like Big Red Costa, Celtic Wizard, Major Mambo. These are all types, even a Malfi Lass, which attacked the line strongly last start, that I think will be playing parts in bigger races. Yeah, a couple of three-year-old fillies down the bottom there in the uh, Ron Sayers colours who go very nicely. But we'll have a look at last start, runner-up. Big Red Costa bowling along in front and getting nabbed for second. Balanced up and further back, Femme de Class at the 350. Miss Dundee, the leader from direct approach and sixpence Spence Jakuku over on the inside and deep out is Luke's goal by the 150 though sixpence spent and Luke's gold have come together to fight it out they're doing battle Luke's gold and sixpence spent Luke's gold the outside with his head in front though doing far the better that's a grand win it's a really good performance by Big Red Costa and Princess Jasmine has come out since and won again so the form lines are holding up they ran good time out in front and I think the galloper just needed the run went from 1300 metres to 1800 metres had to carry the 58 and a half kilos and he is one that does normally build through a campaign. He's only had that one win from the 18 career starts, but he's got a bit of class in a field like this. He's definitely a main chance. Number three, Celtic Wizard. I'm sticking with this galloper. I like the run on performance last start. It was not a day to run on. The leaders got it all their own way out in front. Princess Jasmine winning that same race, but... Uh, I think he's a big chance with a little bit of luck. I was a little bit disappointed by the run. I thought so when you saw the stable mate go straight past it from the back of the field and show a better foot, turn of foot in Bjorn to love, that for mine was a little bit of a watch. Whether the 58 kilos on that occasion was too much, I'm not sure. It seemed to carry it before. Uh, you mentioned conditions didn't suit, but it still had its chance, as I said, when a stable mate was able to go past it. Uh, 59 here. Look, I think Celtic Wiz is up to this standard, but I just lost a bit of confidence from last start. Number four, Major Mambo, another one who had a big preparation last uh, at the beginning of the year. Last start was very good at Bunbury, beating only two and a half lengths by Michael Lill. This Galloper's got plenty of class. You only have to go through that run that last prep, as you mentioned, beaten by Lightning in my veins. You then look at the runs this campaign, beaten by Ferngrove and also Michael Lill, which uh, both uh, have won some nice races. Uh, barrier three, 58 and a half kilos at 1,600 metres is ideal. Third up now as well. I think this is a horse to beat. I'll put it on top from one big red Costa. Number five, come on board, and a three, Celtic Wizard. I'm going with the three, Celtic Wizard, ahead of number five, come on board. One big red Costa and 13, streak away. Race number seven at Ascot over the 1,000 metres. A nice uh, field in this race as well. And I'm looking forward to seeing the return of Chinetti, Mark. Yes, and that is our replay horse. Let's have a look at the recent replay. We're at one by one and a half lengths. And then back in the field is Boomshine. Down the straight they run, Chinetti's clear. Leads the way by a length and a half now over second. Berkshire scrubbed along to try and come out after the leader. Just wanting to lay in there as Friars Gifts holding down third, but they're starting to run on, but there's no catching Chinetti. First out the gates and first one home. Bolts in, second Berkshire. Holding we know the class that this galloper has. You only have to take a look at its record where it won that four race. It won over 130,000 as well. But anytime a horse has to take this long out of the game, it lacks a bit of confidence as well. Last prep it was certainly uh, well supported against horses like First Among Equals, Dutton and Giganti. I mean those form lines read way stronger than this. At its best it wins this and it probably wins it quite well. Has to be a bit of a question mark. So. Yeah, $210,000 with the West Bay yeah. bonuses. A great incentive scheme there and certainly uh, bump the prize money of this galloper. I've got him on top but there are a few others that uh, stand out in the race as well. Number seven, Alora May returns. Had a really good campaign, very honest on a Wednesday and uh, recently trialled up very nicely. Yeah, she's all class. I think the form's a bit better than Wednesday when you see only beaten two lengths by Astronomy to go through those other wins as well. The question mark for mine though is the 1,000 metres, has had the two starts there for two seconds and often just runs out of time. The bonus here though, there are some horses that do like to roll out in front. So Chinetti, also Greco will make sure that there's speed in the race. So I think that she can still win this. Kalita was a complete forgive run last start, caught out wide behind Delicate Miss and the like. They did go along and she was caught wide. I'm certainly willing to forgive her. Yeah, so am I, but again, I want to see her put in a performance because there are a few, like the Chinettis, uh, Seeker, which has a very good first up record, Alora May as well, that they are going to be very honest. So she can't afford to put in a performance like that again. So I'll go with number seven, Alora May, despite the distance from one Chinetti, looking forward to the return. Three, Roger the Roman, a six Seeker. I'm going with the one on top, Chinetti, from the two, Ruby Can Run. Three, Roger the Roman, a nice placing last time out. And eight, Coletta. Race number eight at Ascot, it's the listed Burgess Queen over the 1,400 metres of mark. I'm really looking forward to this. I think there's probably six or seven that can win this and you could sell a case for them as well. A lot of intrigue around this race, particularly up the top there. The Belgravia Stakes, when you're stepping up to 1,400 metres, 
Let's have a look at Kai Perinha winning the Belgravia. Straight Kai Perinha reached the lead. It's Kai Perinha hitting the front over on the outside. Get over it. But Kai Perinha lets down brilliantly. She led more than a length to get over it. They're being followed by Show Honey back behind them. And down the outside, Saul Special. But Kai Perinha's going to prevail. Kai Perinha won the... What a performance it was by Kai Perinha. I was super confident that she was going to get the job done on that occasion. But my confidence starts to just back off a little bit here. Uh, we asked Kyle Nowland after the race, would she get four? and he was confident without blowing you away. Joey as a party was confident that she would. We've heard that they probably won't go to the 1600 metre event. So there has to just be a couple of question marks when you take a look. Now barrier 11, going to have to do a little bit of work early to cross and then do all of the work out in front as well. And I just think now with that 56 kilos as well, going up the three, there's just more against her than there is positives. The other one that uh, steps well up in distance from 1000 metres to 1400 metres is the Bunbury three-year-old classic winner, the $100,000 race, I'm Boudica. She comes into this nice of this filly by war champ. Well, you just have to have uh, you know, a lot of appreciation for this galloper from what we've seen already. You're beaten four lengths by Whispering Brook as a two-year-old, beaten a long head by the Celt, uh, sorry, beat the Celt by a long head, and then was a winner last start as well, beating Sweet Aura. Now, everything played into his hands on that occasion, running on strongly, but the speed will not be the same it was on that occasion. The 1,400 metres is no issue, and she just has a brilliant turn of foot. The three and the eight come out of the same form race, Royal Missile and Samovar. They made their runs together. Royal Missile on the outside of Samovar went home a bit too better but I dare say Samovar had come outside of Royal Missile it could have been a different story. There's not too much between these because Samovar found itself in a position it never wants to be well up on the speed uh, now the barrier 13 is actually a blessing in disguise for this team they can just drop back and use that turn of foot exactly what Royal Missile did last start this filly by Smart Missile has got a lot of class about it she's won two of her past three and she did in a dominant display again uh, eased down over the line I think there will be it was not as much between these two as it looks as well I think the racing patterns will really sort them out I'm going to go Royal Missile from Iron Boudica, 8 Samovar and 10 My Grace. Adam, I'm going with 3 on top Royal Missile, ahead of number 8 Samovar, number 2 Iron Boudica and the 10 My Grace. Final race of the day in Ascot, it's over the 1600 metres and probably a, a midweek field here Mark, but there's one right down the bottom that's shown a little bit of class and I think may have been placed nicely for a kill. Yes, uh, he has bigger things to look forward to, number 13 variation. Let's have a look at him running a nice third behind Royal Missile last start. The outside letting down and running on Glimmer Girl and variation trying to push into the clear. Minus looks 200 to go from Samovar. Here's Royal Missile coming from the back of the field. This is going to be a big effort to get up and win from where it's come from. It'll get up all right. It's coming down the outside from the back end. Terrific performance. Royal Missile. Well, we just both said that we have Royal Missile on top in the previous race and now we've got variation dropping from 55 to 54 and a half kilos, drawing barrier one, getting the ideal distance of 1,600 metres and coming up against midweek runners. For mine, this is probably one of the better bets of the day. Yes, he is taking on the older horses, Adam, but as you said, I think he's got a little bit more class and I really like those form lines behind Royal Missile and Samovar. I think they're strong three-year-old form lines, which we'll see play a big part heading towards the WA Guineas and the likes. Adam, in the rest of them in the race, there's not too much else to talk about. The 2J Cup winner, O'Reilly's Crumpet, he can put in a nice run, but he's a bit of a non-winner. Inconsistent is O'Reilly's Crumpet. Your rider at his best concerted run a race, has had the 13 career starts for two victories. Does go all right at Ascot. He's had the three runs here for two placings, so I think it's one that can certainly improve. Adam, what are your numbers? I'm going to go to number 13, Variation. From eight, O'Reilly's Crumpet, I think it's a race between those two. Prentice, number two, and five, Little Shadow. I'd have to agree, Adam. Number 13 on top for me as well, Variation. Ahead of the eight O'Reilly's Crumpet, two Prentice and four Carpanda. Time now to take a look at the best bets of the card and I'm going to go with race one and race nine. A slick mover in the first and then uh, I think we can see variation get the job done in the last mark. Yes, I think race two, number three, Chaser. A lovely colt by Redoute's choice for Bob and Sandra Peters. It'll play its part in bigger races and race number 913 as well, Adam. Ad variation. As we always do say, you can follow us on social media. There's the prompts on screen. Perthracing.com.au. On behalf of both of us, we hope you enjoy your Melbourne Cup day.